I do believe that personalities are big and very important for business, but I think it's overrated. That's my personal perspective. I think it is overrated because I think what is the most important thing is the product. A brand is what can make people have that affinity towards that product. One of the things that I really like to enjoy, I, I do like my own company. I like to relax and chill and I can't have that unless the people around me are enjoying and are good. It just makes me feel like I need to make sure that I leave my mark on the world and I make the world a better place than what I came into. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Need to Succeed podcast. And like we always do on this podcast, we bring on incredible guests just to really understand what is it that makes them successful. Because look, here's the thing. Two people can go through the exact same situation. One person decides because of the situation, they're going to become wildly successful. And the other person decides because of this situation, they can no longer achieve the things that they want to in life. Like, what's the difference? Same situation, different outcome. What is the mindset of the successful person? That is exactly what we look to uncover on this podcast. And today, we have an absolutely fantastic guest. You know, he's doing things that we don't typically see, you know, people within our culture doing. But hopefully, all of this will become clearer as we go through this incredible episode. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. James Mercer. Thank you very much. That was a really good introduction. I'm not going to lie. I like that. You enjoyed that, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you're, you for having me on, by the way. Bro, you're very welcome. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on here. I'm super, super excited about this conversation. You. you know, it's really, you know, starting this podcast is the need to succeed. Mm. It's really about understanding, you know, what does it actually take to succeed? And, you know, I, I'm in the property space. So naturally, you know, there's a lot of property people that have come mm. on, but it, there's so many different avenues of where incredible people are having success and mm. you know i love i know i'm going to enjoy this conversation right and i know it's going to be super valuable for for the audience watching as well so yeah let's get into this bro let's get into it let's get into this okay cool <laughs> we've got tradition on the podcast we've got the very first and the very last questions okay those are the set ones after that yeah. we're just going with the flow just really trying to understand your journey a little bit more sure so the first question is my friend like what does success actually mean to you um so I find that question uh, a, str a strange question for me personally, because knowing myself and how I think, I don't necessarily think I'll ever, ever reach a space whereby I've reached that pinnacle success. I don't think I'll ever be like, yeah, I'm successful. I've done that. Um, I think there's always more. And I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing because... That's why we live. We always, we're always learning. We're always improving. We're always going for more. It's not. It's something I'm comfortable with. I mean, I mean, being comfortable with things and knowing that that's enough. I think that's a great thing. I think it's amazing that um, people can have that mindset. But I don't necessarily feel that I'm built in that way. If that makes sense. Hmm. That's interesting. I, I wouldn't say it's a bad thing. I wouldn't say it's a bad thing. I think. Um... Like definitely striving for more is something mm -hmm. that we all need. As humans, we think I heard Tony Robbins say that as humans, we're designed for growth. Mm -hmm. If we're not growing, then we're dying. So if we feel like we're doing something that's allowing us to keep leveling up and keep growing, that's what actually keeps us alive. Once that stops, you know, we start to essentially die, you know, yeah. feel depressed, feel like, you know, there's nothing to actually live for. So mm -hmm. I completely understand that. At the same time, though, if I, if, if, you know, I would say it's a little bit dangerous to be like, there is no success. It's just we keep moving on to the next and to the next and to the next and to the next. It's like, well, what is it then that you're actually striving for? Um, I would say I'm striving to make things better for people around me, if that makes sense. It sounds a bit, a bit, uh, you know, it doesn't sound like realistic or fancy, but I'll say one of the things that I really like to enjoy, I, I do like my own company. I like to relax and chill and I can't have that unless the people around me are enjoying and are good. So I, it's so important for me to, and more I want to make people good. 
you just see that there's this a next degree of separation, another degree of separation. So in order for that person to be good, that person has to be good. In order for that person to be good, that person has to be good. So it just makes me feel like I need to make sure that I leave my mark on the world and I make the world a better place than when I and than what I came into. Yeah. So I leave I leave the world being better than how I entered the world. Um and yeah, I guess that is quite ambitious, but what means go, what but, is, that, what but, is. That is, but that is success to you. That, yeah. that, that, you know, that is success, right? Like when you feel like you go to a position where you, you've been able to achieve that, mm -hmm. that is success, yeah. right? So, um, but well, yeah, I, I understand time, where you're coming from. As I say, at the same time, I don't think I'll be, like having that kind of mindset, I don't think I'll be able to witness the impacts. I don't think I should be able to witness the impacts that I do have. Mm, see, now that's powerful. I think that's powerful um, because I heard someone else say something about that. It is like the impact that you want to live you know, should really be once you've actually gone from it because then you're not stopping, right? Because when 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 you stop, like what what is there then to live for? So there's people, for example, who become a billionaire and they decide, okay, I'm going to sell my company, all of that, I'm going to retire. And then they get depressed. Think it, hang on, you got all the money in the world, mm. right? Because as humans, we're naturally designed for growth. So I completely understand exactly what you're saying is that the real impact of your life's work is going to be once you've, once you've actually left, right? But at the same time, at each landmark at each post you should be able to celebrate those wins and those victories yeah because that's what's going to enable you to keep striving for more because you're like oh shit look how good this felt i was able to mm. do this for this person that was bad I've, there's this person as well listen i've got to drive more now so i can do that for that person as well so i can get this feeling again yeah. right yeah so um but yeah i'm just kind of you know because i know that's a it's a bit of a you know, no, I just come back from Tony right. Robbins like three weeks ago, so I'm on that. I'm on that motivational vibe. You get me? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I completely get that. I completely um, get that. I like that as well. Cool, man, bro. So let's get into this, right? Let's get into this. Let's talk. Let's talk about you because I understand. You know, for me, the the real inspiration and the real value for a lot of the audience is really about understanding the journey of successful people. Yeah. You know, there's all the things that you're doing now, which we can touch on. But really, like, who, who was James when he was growing up? You know, how, what, what were the experiences that created and made you who you are today, right? So, um, mm. I mean, yeah, just, just give me, like, so for example, let me say when you were in school, what were you like in school? Um, so, <clears throat> if I'm going to be honest with you, I was one of those children that um, I'll be in the class either talking a lot or daydreaming, and then the teacher will talk to me afterwards and... I'll be able to regurgitate everything that the teacher said. I didn't necessarily find school hard in that sense because I'm I'm someone that's I'm very good with just picking things up, and I've never really found that difficult. Um, however, I think as I got older, it got a bit more difficult, like doing that. But I've always just been that kind of way. So, um, like I'll, I'll say that's that's me. Um, I have. I was quite talkative in school sometimes, sometimes I wasn't. I don't know. I mean, I guess <laughs> the, the jury is out. Whoever knew me, whoever knows how I was like, could say how I was like. <laughs> but myself, I don't know. I'll say growing up, I was I was quite creative. Um, and I was always just, I guess I was always just looking for more. <laughs> did you enjoy school? Did you enjoy it? Like, did you enjoy the whole experience or...? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. I did, yeah. Yeah, I think I did enjoy school, actually. Nice. There were parts of school that I didn't, but in general, I wouldn't necessarily look back look back at school and see it as a negative experience. Yeah. Not for me. What did you enjoy? What were the parts of school that you enjoyed that you thought, you know what, like, I, I, I really enjoyed this? I enjoyed everything. Like, mm. play, you know, friends, friends learning, learning, sports, class. Nice. Like, were you getting good grades? Uh. All right. <laughs> All right. I wouldn't say say I wouldn't. I wasn't like an A student. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? I wasn't. Uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say that I like I studied that much in school. Mm. Like I just, I just went with it. If that mm. makes sense. Um, at the same time, I would say like um, uh, like for me, I enjoyed I enjoyed it more retrospectively because at the time you don't necessarily think that wow these are gonna be like some of the easiest days of my life. Mm, <laughs> You're thinking, oh, I've got to wake up and go in. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> that's nothing. <laughs> you know what Real I mean? life hits you now, isn't it? Yeah, What man. would you say was an experience you had as a youth that you would say has shaped the man that you've become today? Ooh, it's too many to mention. Too many to mention. Um, 
I would definitely say um I would attribute the man I am now to my parents for sure because just how hard like they worked and just watching them do that. Um I particularly like to even mention that I'll say my mum in general, my mum's probably the hardest person, hardest working person I know, like like that like lives and breathes. I was working as I know that lives and breathes. And I've seen people that are very, very, very wealthy. Yeah. But I still yet to see someone that works harder than my mum. And I think watching her and learning that aspect, I'm not saying I work as hard as her, but if the time calls for it, I, I'm I'm willing to get my, I can put, get my, roll my sleeves up mm. and just do what she does. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So like, that's something that I would say that definitely shapes me. And I've seen her go through a lot. So in that, that's, that's, that's definitely what shapes me and makes me want to work hard and do well. Okay. Okay. That, that makes sense. So kind of feel like growing up and seeing your mom work so hard, like what, what, what did that make you feel? Okay, cool. So you understand the, the, the value and the ethics of working hard, mm. but what did that trigger inside you? Um, if I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think that me as a person, I've probably even delved into that much yet. Like in terms of me, like internally, like what that has done to trigger for me. But what I can definitely can say just off the jump is just, I just appreciate it a lot. I appreciate my father as well, how hard he's worked. I appreciate both of them, you yeah. know? So it's just that. And I will say a lot of what I do is to honour them. And in honouring them, um, you know, it keeps me going. I mean, that's, listen, that's your, your true African son. Yeah. A true African child. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess I am. Honor yeah. oh, no, my I father am. and my mother. 100%. Yeah. No, 100%. Pre- and, listen, that, that, that definitely makes a lot of sense because growing up in a, you know, from in an immigrant household, you know, mm. there's just this, it's a different level of work ethic, right? Because you've come to this country for the opportunity. Yeah. Right? And yeah. being here, there's no sitting down and doing nothing. It's like, there's this opportunity here. We've come for this. So we have to, we have 100%. to. 100%. Right. Um, I see. So I was always raised that as a child. So both of my parents are from Ghana. Yeah. And um, they're from like quite Ghanaian like families. I've got family all over the world. Don't get me wrong. But like the core of like Ghanaian values and in the, in the family being from Ghana as well is always a thing of like when you're doing something, whatever you're doing, um, have it in your mind that, you know, um, you're probably going to have to go back there one day and you'd want it to be in a good state. Do you get where I'm coming from? Mm. So with that, it it, it automatically um, makes me think of that a lot. So mm. even as much as I'm here, it's like, I obviously I like being in the UK. I was born and raised here, do you know? But I always have a part of me that's there. So like, um, they do say when you're here, you got to work hard to achieve things and, and to make things. Obviously, I don't want to waste their time that they've been here. I don't want to make it seem like they came here for no reason. So i got to work hard to do that. But at the same time, there's so many opportunities um, back in Africa that I just feel that are slept on. And I feel that's something that um, people of our generation should think a lot about. And I don't say people, I don't necessarily mean people of an African background. Mm-hmm. I just mean anybody, because if we're going to be honest, it's the youngest um, continent in the world in terms of pe- people that are able to work. Mm-hmm. So if people don't take advantage of that, I think in the coming years, they will regret that. Mm, I don't disagree with you at all. You know, I've got, I've got, I've got my team, I've got three team members in Nigeria. Right, so for for me, um, I'm I'm a big, 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 big believer in that. I'm also Pan African, right? I, I, I'm Pan African. I think you know, there is talking about the youngest workforce in the world, yes, but I'm also talking about this young potential in terms of the capability of what Africa can become. It's like it's at its infancy, and there's still so much more that can happen. And people are sleeping right now. I always make this joke, but it's not a joke actually. It's not a joke. But I always mm-hmm. say, if I'm going to become a billionaire. Mm-hmm. It's going to be in Nigeria. Like, to me, that's very clear. Yeah. Uh, it's very, very clear. 
But I think a lot of people don't actually understand. It's weird. I mean, maybe the people still got this colonial mindset where they don't they just to look at Nigeria as this, you know, people bloody running around naked in huts. I don't know how the hell people are seeing Nigeria, but, you know, the reality is the opportunities. And Ghana was what we were joking about just yeah. before we started about, you know, <laughs> you know, Ghana kind of overtaking us with the opportunities and stuff like that. Um, or infrastructure, all of these things, where we're still lacking behind on all of this. But nonetheless, but, Africa is mm. a continent. There's there's a lot happening there, right? One hundred percent. What I would say, what I would say, um, um, the advantages of Ghana is the access. So, say for example, there could be somebody in Nigeria or someone in the UK which you wouldn't necessarily be able to access, but in Ghana, it probably would be easier for you to access them there. Mm, However, explain. Um, like you'll be in the same parties, the same networking events, you'll be in the same places. Are you talking about because of the size? Um, probably, but if you're talking about respectively, Ghana is actually quite a big country compared to a lot of African countries. But you're still not going to get those kind of opportunities. Mm. Um, I feel like when you're out there and you are hungry and you have got something that you want to do and something you got to say, um, it is possible to be. Put your, to find yourself in with the right people you might have to um if it's like with people that are like from there like natively there um you might have to wait for a little while sometimes <laughs> but uh it's worth it yeah let's not talk about that <laughs> let's not talk about that yeah, i think you know what i mean but um then uh i'll say nigeria talking about like, in terms of infrastructure the infrastructure in nigeria is coming up really fast and i'm really I've seen that like, the train projects they got going there and that sort of stuff. I, I really respect that. And I think um, there are so many business opportunities that are to be had from those kind of things. If you think about it, like yourself, property and that sort of stuff, every single property here in the UK, like if you bought like property right next to a train station, right next to um, a tube station, right next to any kind of transport, transport yeah. all of a sudden you know that, you know that, do you know what I mean? You mm -hmm. know one but, direction. Yeah. But these train stations and that sort of stuff, they haven't even been built in a lot of countries in Africa. They haven't even been built. So <laughs> if you're able to get to these places in time to do that, mm. the money you're going to, like, just for your future, for your kids and your Free kids' money. kids. It's so, like, you could, you could, like, there's so much, there's so much, so much things that haven't been done yet mm -hmm. that have just been done here. And if you're able to go there and do those things, you can make a lot of money doing that as 100%. well 100% and it, and it's to us it's just secondary knowledge yeah right because it's it's you have to be the pioneer you're not smart bro <laughs> yeah, oh yeah smart. this is what I was doing in England I couldn't I couldn't yeah. I don't have enough money to do that here oh bro yeah. what is a new train station mm -hmm. I already know so you're going to yeah. be first to the post because you know these opportunities you know what yeah. to look for because you know coming they're from already it. a lot more established you know mm -hmm. where, we're, where we're sort of coming from but you mm -hmm. know what bro there's something that you said which when you said that I said bro mm. I've never heard that before you said your parents or your dad were saying to you, or the way you kind of brought up is, you know, you want to build Ghana because at some point you're going to end up there. Yeah. Almost like an inevitability, which is crazy, bro, because that's not yeah. actually how a lot of, like, what, well, maybe not to me. Yeah. Especially within our generation. Yeah. I think it's it's more now, our generation, yeah. but... Like our parents' generation went to went talking about us going back home. They're talking about listen, I've come here to bust my ass so you can come here and yeah. you can make something of yourself here. Yeah. But no one was really talking about you gotta make sure like Nigeria's cool yeah. because you're gonna end up back there. I think I think it depends. When I say it depends, it depends on the relationship that the individual, the person has with the country from back home. Mm. You know? Like say for example, I I, can't, I don't like I'm not Nigerian well, I've got as you mentioned my middle name yeah <laughs> like Nigeria there but I can't necessarily say that I know what Nigeria is like or what's going on in Nigeria or even like the history to a certain degree but I know that there has been war there there has been stuff that turmoil there so therefore that leaves people with um, traumatic um, feelings towards the country and when they want to go they want to run do you know what I mean I can say for sure that my parents they probably did have some sort of feelings, but at the same time, it wasn't bad enough for them to to, to put me off the country altogether. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And at the same time as well, you can see what's happening, man. Like you can see what's happening just, do you know what I mean? Like mm. people want to invest, they mm. want to go back. Mm. Like there was this year of return. Mm. People went back, everybody, do you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%.
like I don't need, I don't even need to explain it. Like, you can, you can like see the, the energy within within our the energy within our generation is very yeah. very different. Yeah. Because bro, we've been here long enough. We've seen our parents here. We've seen the quality of life that you know that they're living. Mm. You know when they left to this this dream and and you see the way you know people are being treated and all of this sort of stuff. Yeah. You're like, bro, this this ain't it. Like, well, actually, there's a, there's a, there's another opportunity. Like back this way. Do you know what I mean? There's a story I heard actually. A friend told me that. Um, uh, like, <laughs> I heard a story from many people that when they were coming to the UK, yeah, they will see something on TV that, you know, there's a nice house with a, with a garden and a front garden and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And then they leave their compounds back home to come here to like the smallest flat bro, or the tiniest house. They're like, wow. This let is me tell you something, bro. Growing up in Nigeria, yeah, so this is my. <laughs> We we went we were not wealthy at all. Yeah. Growing up in Nigeria, we had a yard, a detached house. Yeah, we grew flipping. There was fruits in the yard. There was you know vegetables, yam. Because all of this in mm. front of our yard, bro, within mm. our gate, mm. we were we were not wealthy at all. Yeah. Bear in mind, I'm growing up knowing my mom's in England, mm. so I'm like, yo, I can't like. It's not like I can't wait, but I always knew one day I'm going to go to yeah, England. Yeah. Actually, the day that I found out I was going to yeah. England, I actually cried. I mm. ran into my room and I was crying and crying <laughs> and crying because not yeah. like out of joy. It was yeah. actually sad because I'm like, I'm leaving my family. Oh. Because, you know, when it, like, it hit home, like, you're going to England next week. Mm. And I just started, I was crying, bro, like, because it, like, it hit me, like, the reality. Mm. So, but that's different. But... I've known I'm going to come to England. So there's all of these visions, this joy, like, yo, England is mad, that's mm. sick. Watching all these American films, thinking that's yeah. England, but it's America anyway. You know the way we just, it's just yeah, white yeah. people, it's cool, it's all the yeah, same, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I came to England, bro, and I could not believe it. Bear in mind, my mom had worked hard. Now my mom's doing good. She's mm. got her own business, killing it. She's got a yard, bought a yard in Catford, bought a house. So she's clear. I, like that. I come now, I'm like, hang on. I thought we were rich. <laughs> like, we're in, a, we're, we're in a flipping terraced house. Like, there's other houses touching our house. I'm like, what's, <laughs> like, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, what is this? You know what's weird? You know what's weird, yeah? I'm trying to think whether I've seen a terraced house in Ghana. Before, <laughs> like, <laughs> you ask that question. There must be, there must be. There, there wrong, must, be, must be, but you're like, but I don't. What's there though? Because I can't, like, now you, mm. I can't, Maybe semi detached, maybe like duplexes where you did like four flats or something like that in the compound. There's flats, I've yeah, seen there's flats, flats, of course, of course. But like terraces, but terraces, yeah. what like 50 yards? Yeah, to, all you know, one all road. The... I'm trying, I don't know, you know, <laughs> even semi detached, you know, like okay, they're semi detached, but it's not that common. It's not, it's not. Do you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, wow. it's um, that's a bit mad, you know. That's, is it, I'm just clocking this right now, so when you're saying that, I'm thinking, just clock it right now, I'm thinking, wow. Like that actually isn't. The imagine same, isn't my imagine but, my impression mm -hmm. when I roll, when I come through. I'm thinking, yeah. what's going on? No, but they, it should be though. The reason I say there should be is because there just needs to be more forms of affordable housing. Yes. And if that's going to be what it is to give for affordable housing to people, then so be it. Like I, I ain't mad at that. But I just just to think of it, I'm just thinking of it. Like it's like everybody, even like here, everybody aspires to the best. They all want to. They see something and they think that that's the best, so they want that. And um, so, for example, we'll be sitting here and we'll be seeing everybody in Range Rovers, yeah? And we'll be like, oh, you know what? Like, I've got enough money right now to buy a um, a Skoda, but I want to get that Range Rover because <laughs> I've seen nail band Range Rover. To them, they might, you know, be a certain way. They might have enough money to buy a terrace, but because they've seen everybody have these compound houses mm. with, um, you know, like all this land around it and, you know, mm. things there, they're going to be that, I want that. Do you mm. know what I mean? That's what they're going to be looking at. So that's that's what I, even like talking to people from all different kind of um, financial backgrounds in Ghana, I kind of feel like everybody wants, they think they expect to one day get land and build a house with a compound around it and a gate. That's the aspiration, that's normal. But again, that's where opportunities come in. They see it as well. They see it with their own two eyes. So yes. it's like what they expect. 100%. But I, think, but I think, you know, first of all, we've got to look at, we've got to look at pricing. 
um, mm -hmm. you know, what's going to be the cost of actually building terraces versus building your own detachment and what can you sell it at? I don't know those numbers, but... That's a good question. Yeah, do you know what I'm well, saying? Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 again, that's yeah. where the opportunity is, what we can see. But you, you might go. say that you don't want it, yeah. but when I'm telling you it's going to cost this much yeah. and you can have your own house, why do you not? For that much, yeah. I will live next to someone. Who, no, but uh, even if, even if, yeah, you're just there for a short period of time, so you can stack it's your a money stop gap and while you can you... buy. Yeah, stop gap. It's exactly. a good stop gap. Exactly. I think every people that I hear that get it a lot of times, they think it's going to be a stop gap, even if they stay there for the rest <laughs> of their life. But they presuming this is going to be a stop gap. Yeah. But it's just like, okay, I'll bring it back here yeah, to what you were saying earlier. It's like you're saying things that are already done. Yeah. You bring them there and no one's done that. That's a prime example. Mm -hmm. And we didn't start this conversation intending to do that. So we're just showing that, like, look, there are so many things Everywhere. that... So everywhere, there's ideas all the, everywhere. Things that we take for granted. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. It's not even ideas. Like you said, we're just, oh, terrace house, why don't we just build a terrace? It's not even like you have to think creatively. Like, I've got to think of these ideas. It's just about spending time there. You yeah. just spend time and you realise, oh, oh, they haven't got this. Mm -hmm. oh, I could start that. Mm -hmm. Oh, they have oh, this mm -hmm. isn't, oh. What about, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, or maybe completely. there's one, but there's only one. Completely. I feel, oh, well, if it's making money, I could just start another one. It's not yeah. like there's already a thousand of these. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? 100%. Opportunities everywhere. 100%. Okay, cool. So, so coming back to yourself then, mm -hmm. like in terms of, because you, you seem, you were born here, right? Yes, born here. You were born here. Yeah. You seem to know a lot about Ghana. You seem yeah. to know a lot about Africa. Like, how's that? So, I was born, I was actually born in Croydon, um, but I moved, I went to Ghana for a year um, to go to school there in year seven no year eight year eight okay so i went in the whole year there um what, what I went happened to boarding school I know, I know when my mom tried to send yeah. me back to nigeria that was that was a that were you were you doing some naughty behaviors is this what you know is a punishment I, you know <laughs> you know how it is but at the same, at the same time I, I really cherished that opportunity mm. and i feel like i got to go to ghana at a time whereby I say it's a lot before how it was like right now. So I got to see it grow from where it is, where it was to where it is now. What was and, it like back then? Um, it was it was buzzing, man. Yeah. Like it was a vibe. Like it was a vibe. Like at the time, the music was hip life. That's what everybody mm -hmm. liked to listen to. Um, like uh, people still partied, had fun, um, you know, like, it was very different. Don't get me wrong. It was very different, you know. But you still had people that had DSTV. You still had all of this. It it, it felt very different. It felt like... It felt a bit like uh, your own... It felt a bit like a secret. Mm. Do you get I me? Mean? Not a secret because everybody knew in a sense. Everyone knew. But it wasn't like now. Like, you, you, know, you, you knew that this is a great vibe. Where I am right now, this vibe is amazing. If other people experience this vibe too, they'll be like, wow, this is a bit... You know, it's very freeing, mm. very a certain way. But now a lot now people are feeling that vibe now and people people know what it's like. And it is it's interesting to see people see what it's like and know what it's like. Even to at the time when I was there, like um I had friends and I'll tell them oh, I'm from Ghana. What what's that? Do you know what I mean? And now <laughs> a lot of these friends that I will say that have actually been there. Mm. And this is not like from me telling them to go there, this mm. is of their own accord. So they know that vibe. I talked to them about, yeah, that's that vibe that I felt at that time when mm. we were younger. This is what I was talking about. But I wouldn't necessarily say it's the same, but it's still there a little bit, you know? It's still the remnants of the society. And Ghana is a lovely place, man. I'll say that. I do recommend people do check it out. Yeah, I definitely want to go to Ghana. But like being back in borders, because obviously you were, you were here in the UK, you were born here, you've been to school, yeah. primary school, all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. And now... Secondary school, you're being yeah. you're being shipped up to another continent. Yeah, like what was that like for you? So, what I would say is, um, when you're schooling here in the UK, yeah, you know your parents didn't school here in the UK. So, when they're telling, when they see school a certain way, you see school a different way mm. because you you're like, why would you think about that? Like, why do you think <laughs> see school? And that? Why would you? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Then when you go to school and you school like how your parents are schooled, are schooling. <laughs> You start to think, ah, oh, so that's why. Like, oh. Do you know what I mean? So I would say that it it improved my relationship with my parents, made me understand them a bit a bit more. Mm. Then at the same time, I'll say that um, yeah, boarding school in Ghana in those days, like it ch it's changed now. 
But in those days, yeah, it, it was it was an adventure. <laughs> it was it was a serious adventure. So I'll say that straight. In what it was way? Adventure. Um, boy, the things we get up to. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, um, like, can I say this on the podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of no, but there's nothing that is not too nothing too bad. It's so, like so. I'll say for example, some things that we did. Um, there'll be like entertainment. Um, like every other week or something like that where like they were playing music and people just you know do stuff and people like you know sometimes people will rap or whatever do vibe. something like that yeah vibe and it was like you just had fun mm. and the thing is that we're all in it together mm-hmm. so you all do it together so there's one other thing as well that happened um, inspection so inspection was every week yeah and on inspection you had to make sure that your clothes are ironed your sheets are ironed your nails yep that was all straight, mm-hmm. everything. Like even like they come and they they get your handkerchief mm-hmm. wiped behind your ear. Mm-hmm. If it's dirty, okay, one. You know what I mean? One lash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just all the different things that you have to do to make sure that you're there. And it that kind of stuff it gets you regimented. It gets you organized. It makes you think in a different way. You organize your truck box so that everything is in line. You organize your trunk. Everything is folded because they'll ask you to open your trunk and open your truck box. Mm. So just to make sure that everything's organized. And y- y- you become a certain... Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes when it gets to that, you try to stay ready in some, some, on some aspects so you don't have to get ready. But we did like spend you know a while before inspection every week trying to make sure that everything is done. You know, queuing up for the iron so you can make sure that our stuff is good and... Yeah, it's a great. That's a great experience. How do you how do you think that that um that shaped you? Um, it made me. It made me. I'll tell you one thing actually. What's funny, yeah, because <laughs> in border school in Ghana, yeah, it's very normal. Well, not in Ghana, it might be in everywhere, but it's very normal for the senior kids, the older kids, to send the younger kids around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like when I was in the UK, yeah, if there's a conversation that I'm hearing and I'm thinking, oh, I can I can answer that. <laughs> I always I used to always speak. And then if you do that in Ghana, yeah, <laughs> you're just getting attention. If you do that in boarding school, you're just giving your attention to the older kids. They're just going to try and send you to do something. <laughs> so then I realised that, look, let me just not say anything. <laughs> so it just taught me just to sometimes just keep myself to myself, mm. which is cool. But at the same time, it also taught me, um, as I said, all the discipline, the stuff that I'm mentioning to you right now. And that discipline, I think, um, helped me a lot moving forward in life. I was okay, comfortable living on my own. When I got to uni, a lot of people were daunted. I wasn't daunted in any way whatsoever. Just, you know, it made me ready for life. Amazing. Okay, cool. So let's let's talk about what you do now. Okay. Yeah. So what what is it that you do now? So um in university I studied um sociology. Yeah. And a lot of people say when you study sociology, like what are you gonna do with a sociology degree? Like yep, what I can you do with that? that? Yep, that's the first thing you do. If your kids said they study sociology, <laughs> you probably would have told them, No, don't do it. <laughs> I studied it because I was actually doing well when I was in um, sixth form in sociology. I used to talk a lot in the class, but I just loved the subject. Um, but there were some modules that I was studying in it that was to do with public relations and advertising is going to advertising public relations. And I thought, you know what? I really want to get into that industry. I want to get into advertising and public relations. So um, as soon as I finished university, um, we're in a recession kind of funny. It's like a credit crunch, you know, crisis kind of thing. Oh, wait. No, this is after that. This was like okay. 2012. Okay. During the times of the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it was hard. There weren't jobs. So I was boy, busting my ass trying to find a job. And um, I knew I wanted to work in public relations. And um, so I did, I was doing, I was doing, I did internships here and there and placements and I ended up working at the place that I wanted to work in, like originally, when I had a placement there. Um, and then from there, uh, it just set me, it set me along. So by then, after that, it, getting jobs weren't as hard. Mm. And I was managed to get myself into some of the biggest public relations agencies in the world. Wow. But when I did that, when I did start off um, interning, I was told to go into digital and social because I was told this is where the industry is going to go. So if you want to get ahead, get into digital and social. At the time, social media was was quite young. Um, brands weren't really on Instagram that much at the time. Brands were on Facebook, of course. Um, they didn't really know what they're doing on Facebook. It was still an education piece. 
and they were just jumping on Twitter as well. So it was a it was a sell to get a brand onto to Twitter. Instagram became a sell after that, but it was like brands are already on Facebook. Let's try and get you on Twitter. That was a lot of the conversation. Mm. Then as I stayed in industry, Instagram became a thing. Not that, that when we're getting brands on Instagram, we're thinking let's get brands on Snapchat and you know Google Plus at one point. You know what I mean? Like it was that old. Um, and now I'll say that I've been in industry for such a long time that I can consider myself a veteran, and that's a bit weird because yeah, I, I remember like yesterday. Amazing. So 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 that's basically the industry in. So it's um PR advertising. Yeah, um, I, I, well, I'm a social media um, professional. So nice. I've been working in social media within the PR and digital um, industry for around 12 years yeah. plus. Amazing, amazing. I mean, that is that is a veteran status. Yeah, that is literally a veteran status. Okay, cool. Because so you're old now. <laughs> how, 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 how do you then? How do you, you know, because, you know, there's a lot of people. Look, we're, we're in this age of the 21st century now where it's, it's all about personal branding. Yeah. Even if you've got a business, no one cares about, you know, Apple. Everyone cares about Steve Jobs. No one cares about Amazon. Everyone knows about, you know, um, Bezos. And everyone knows about Elon Musk, right? Mm. So there might be the company, but it's the personalities, right? Mark Zuckerberg, all of this is the personalities, like the age of personal branding. Mm. What would you say to someone, you know, um, someone like me, for example? I'm, I'm, you know, continually trying to work on my brand and all of that sort of stuff. What is the biggest tip for someone out there just starting off to say, okay, cool, if you want to focus on your brand, mm -hmm. here are the three things that you should be focusing on doing. Because I yeah. guess if from your standpoint, you used to actually work on um, on brands. Yeah. Doing sponsorship deals, right? Is that correct? Um, I want to say sponsorship deals is okay. I just create their social media pages okay. and help them oh, so grow. Also, you, you were actually putting brands on social media and then yeah, building I've done their, that. their pages. I've done okay. that. And as well, I've also managed social media pages. Uh, I'm still managing social media pages to this day free, on a freelance on on a a ba freelance basis. Yeah. Um, you know, to fund my business that I have itself. But um, what I would say, based on what you're saying, and I would say that this will tie into my business um, is that I do believe that personalities are big and very important for business, but I think it's overrated. That's my personal perspective. I think it is overrated because I think what is the most important thing is the product. Don't get me wrong, the products and the brand because a brand is what can make people have that um, affinity towards that product. But if you attach, if you attach, if you completely attach a brand to a person, then the brand goes down with the person. Do you know what I mean? So it's important for the person to be able to uplift the brand and push the company up and make sure that the thing is functioning well. But I do not believe in a brand being attached to a person. I'll give you an example. I heard um, Diddy talking about um, when he was creating a TV, creating a TV channel, and he named his TV channel Revolt. Because he said he didn't want to attach it to his name. Mm -hmm. Because if he attached it to his name, it goes down with him. Now it's called Revolt. He can pass that on to somebody else if he really wanted to. He can just, he can, he can just, it can outlive him. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Whereas there's so many uh, brands that are named under or a name under a person, or or they just attached. To, and I, I, me personally, I'm just not with that. Okay. Do you not think though that people in this day and age actually want to speak to someone? If I'm doing business with you, yeah. I want to do business with you. I want to get to know you. Yeah. I want to feel like I'm bought into, yeah. you know, actually working with you. Yeah. Right? As opposed to I'm just working with, let's say, your company, for example. Yeah. What's your opinion on that? So I would ask you, like, outrightly, do you know who the founder of Instagram is? Founder? Yeah. Well, I don't know the founder, but I know who owns it. Mark Zuckerberg, right? Yeah, he owns it now. Yeah. But he didn't make Instagram what it was, what it is. No. Do you know what I mean? Not just that, like um, you know, I can say who the founder I can I know who the founders of Instagram. Of I course. know who the founder is um of Twitter. Yeah. And the founder of all of these people who made it what it is. But it's not commonly known. But it's like I think there is such a um it's such a oh, what's the word? There is a blessing in being anonymous. In a certain to a certain degree, but being known by the people who need to know, mm -hmm. because once you lose 
the ability to just pop into the shop and get yourself a chocolate bar, <laughs> life is gone. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? That's, I, I couldn't imagine living a life where I can't just get out of my house and just walk down the road. I, I, don't, I don't want that. Do you yeah. get what I mean? But if I lose that in order to get my company to where it needs to get to, so be it. I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. But in essence, I do believe that like, you know, you can be, you can separate a person from a brand. Mm -hmm. If Mark Zuckerberg goes down, Facebook ain't going down, Meta ain't going down, it'll go to someone else. And whoever takes over Mark Zuckerberg, I promise you, they'll probably be better. Like right now, the person that's taken over Steve Jobs of Apple, they've gone strength to strength. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I can say straight, I know who that person, I know that person's name and that sort of stuff, but a lot of people don't know yeah, that I know person. Yeah, I know who it is. Yeah, but he could, he could walk down the street right now yeah. and he won't be recognised by everybody. Yeah. He won't be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Do you know yeah. what I mean? And, I think it's, it's quite a, a good place to be. But my argument would be, yeah. would Apple be where Apple is if it wasn't for Steve, jo Steve Jobs? Now, it's easy once the brand has already got no. the affinity, right? No, I, agree. I, I don't think it would. I agree. I don't this think is what would. I'm saying. So it's, it's like when you're kind of starting off. So for, And again, there, there's other examples. So if you're talking about VC-backed companies. Yeah. Okay, cool. Listen, if you throw me a little two, three, four, five million... Mm. I might not need to, you don't need to know me. I could just, you know, pump, yeah. pump, 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 yeah. pump, pump, pump into yeah. ads, right? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. But if I haven't got that, yeah. what are people going to buy into? How yeah. am I going to drive that traffic? How am I going to get that engagement? How am I, it's through stories, right? And no, the, the best stories is my story, my journey. I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. I think that's true. Um, but the thing is, I feel like we're at an age where we're always looking at VC backed companies, which, which you're right. Um, also, at the same time, like um, a lot of the companies we are talking about, like in terms of Apple, in terms of, um, you know, uh, you know, Amazon, if we're talking Facebook, about Airbnb, Facebook, Amazon, yeah, yeah. Amazon, these are VC-backed companies. Yep. These are VC-backed companies. True. And they've needed that brand and the VC-backed. So true. That, that's just to say that it is that it's not easy, mm. but I don't think there is a one-way rule to how it's done. Don't get me wrong, I do think it's important to put yourself out there, hence yeah. why I'm even here chatting to you <laughs> right now. But, you know, I don't, I think, I think, I think people shouldn't be hard on themselves if they haven't done enough of that. Mm -hmm. That's my personal opinion. I don't think, yeah. I think people should be hard on themselves if they haven't done enough of that. But if you haven't, and you want to need a chance to do it, I don't think it's bad for people to do that. Yeah. And if you can get around as I said, make the brand not attached to the person. I think you should, you should, you should give that, take the opportunity to. Awesome, bro. Well, yeah, definitely people shouldn't be harsh on themselves. It's, it's ultimately, you can start yeah. where you are now, right? It doesn't yes. need to be like, it's not, yes. it's not all over. Yeah. Um, cool. So let's talk about your, your company, your business, yeah. right? Tell us a little bit more about that. So my business is called Tape. Yeah. Um, spelled T-A-Y-P. Um, Tape is a social media network. Yeah. So, uh, it's quite crazy, isn't it, to start a social media network? And that's fine, you know. I completely understand why anyone thought it was crazy to do that, especially in these times. Um, however, I had this idea around seven, eight years ago, like a while ago, um, whilst I was working in social media. And I noticed that social media itself is like quite a cruel place. And, um, you know, people aren't really listening to each other. So, um I actually looked at a stat this year that actually said that um, uh, we're living in a more polarised world than we ever have before, isn't it? And, I, and I've said this before. Um, but I felt, as people aren't listening to each other, how can I create something that can make people listen to each other? So I got this idea one day when I had a day off of work um, when I was on a WhatsApp group. People were sending uh, voice notes to each other in this WhatsApp group. And I can't really listen to that at work because at the time, you know, it was a bit weird to do that. So when I was at home, I listened to these voice notes and I was sending voice notes as well and I was enjoying myself. I was like, well, this is kind of fun. <laughs> so I thought, hold on, why not create a social media app that's literally based off voice notes? So whoever you follow, their voice notes appear on your homepage. You can press autoplay and it just plays all the voice notes of the people that you're following. So example, if you're giving them, um, uh, you know, advice on um, succeeding, you're giving advice on like stuff that you heard from um, um, uh, Robbins the other day. Mm. Yeah, that, that stuff, you can, people can put that there and follow him and hear that. Then on the explore page, there'll be different topics on which you could uh, listen to. Follow. So yeah, 
yeah. So those different topics on the explore page, um, you can create them. They're user created, so you can create a topic about um, football. You can create a topic about uh, you know whatever like hip hop or whatever you want to talk about. That last album that you heard, create a topic about it. And you hear people talking about the topic, so therefore you're able to find out what people's opinions really are about that topic in general. Mm. Then went further to thinking, how does this make money? So I think, okay, sponsored topics, you know? So for example, if you had a company and you wanted to get people's opinions on something, you can then sponsor a topic to be at the top of someone's explore page. And then people can leave their opinions on that product that you do have, making the app eventually will eventually become the world's largest focus group, you know? then it gets deeper than that. But that's just the introduction as I'm explaining to you what the app actually does. Well, wow, interesting. So is it, is it is it kind of like a, basically like Facebook, right? But it's just audio, no videos. So no yeah. reels, it's, yeah. it's audio. It's literally like I'm sending a WhatsApp voice note. But instead of me having to read all this, I'm just I'm just pressing play yeah. and it's just going through. And then if I don't want to listen to the next one, I'll stop it, I'll skip it. Yeah. 90 seconds maximum, by the way. 90 seconds. Yeah. I was going to say, but, yeah. but, but but hey, you know, the thing is, it doesn't even matter if it's an hour yeah. maximum. Because if you do an hour thing, I'm not trying to listen to an hour. I'll pause you, I'll move on to the next one. And then yeah. only the popular ones will then obviously become popular and people listen to it. Well, that's another thing. Like when, we're, when, it's, when it's released to the general public, yeah, um, we'll have more insights to know what is the optimum like, exactly. time for mm -hmm. when people are listening. So if, if your voice note is it's a certain amount of length, you know, just, you know, don't do that. It's not good if you want to get a lot of followers. But if there's someone that's quite popular that already gets a lot of people listening to them. So say, for example, you have a podcast, so you're a talker. So people might, you might have like a, a diehard followership that, want to listen to you talk for 90 seconds. They want to hear you talk for over a minute and they want that. And they might be calling for that. And for you to um, cater towards your core audience, your core audience might want that. But I don't know yet. I don't want to say advice and say, oh, this is how you should maneuver an app. The mm. app comes out and you do that. You're like, oh, <laughs> no one's listening to me. <laughs> I shouldn't have, how do you tell me this? So, you know what I mean? There okay. You go. Bro, that's crazy. Like, how, how do you, because listen, people can have ideas, but to yeah. actually go and start an app, yeah, and actually start an app. That's that's pretty impressive. Like, what 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 gave you the the confidence that you can actually go out there and do that? So when I had the idea, um, I spoke to like tech people. I spoke to like powerful people in different positions, people that I had the ear of, and I said to them, I, I got this idea. You know, I'll I mention it, and they were like, Isn't that out already? And when I heard that, I thought, okay, I, I'm onto something. Mm. Was it, I knew it wasn't. And mm. The fact that they said, isn't that already meant that it fits into people's lives. It's so viable. It's so perfect. Yeah. 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 So it's like what you were saying about having these ideas of going to Ghana or going to Nigeria and doing something different. Um, this is a new idea. Like voice notes already exist. Mm. Um, you know, it's just placing it in a different way. Social media networks already exist. It's mm. just making the making create content mm. a lot easier mm. rather than me having to sit down, set up a camera, set up this, get the angles and that sort of stuff there. I can literally just get up on my own bed. I'm thinking about something really interesting that I want people to hear. And some people don't like it. being on video. They feel embarrassed and shy, but people will be happy to to talk and voice note. Yeah. Um, yeah, bro, that's... That is a, a very like. I, I listen. I'm 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 thinking about thinking like yeah, like that 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 would be something that would make it a lot easier to do to do content. Yeah. Saying that oh, I want to do it live. Ah, oh, bro, I've got to jump in the shower and yeah. I've got to comb up my hair. I'm looking a little bit dusty. Whereas yeah. I could just do it live every morning at five o'clock. Yeah, roll out of bed, drink yeah. my water, drink my celery juice, and jump on the live. Yo, but we will not have any live content when it's created. Yes. I just want to make clear. Yes. I, Mark Zuckerberg probably didn't think he's going to have live. Now he's got them on Facebook, Instagram. You know yet. what? But I have to state, we will not have any live. I have to state that. Reason being, because we noticed that social media right now, a lot of it, um, stuff that are live content and that sort of stuff, your time like, is working around that. So say for, say for example, um, the way television used to be, if someone wants to watch like, Top of the Pops, Top of the Pops on Friday, that time is clear. So they get home to watch Top of the Pops and watch it at that mm -hmm. time. You know, EastEnders or whatever, blah, blah, blah. That's the time that they're watching that show on time mm -hmm. and they'll structure their lives around television. Now, when with an on-demand came, then Netflix, then 
Prime, Amazon Prime, all this sort of stuff, yeah. Now people's, t now watching television or watching TV shows is structured around people's time mm. rather than their time structured around the television show. So I believe the same thing in terms for social, in terms of like, even like in terms of audio. Um, part of tape is to make sure that people can listen to that voice note when they feel like listening to that voice note, not have to listen to that voice note um, when it's being recorded live, like um, say for example, like on Clubhouse or Spaces and that sort of stuff. I'm not trying to, you know, say, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I, yeah. But, but, but with a live, so on Instagram, for example, yeah. I mean, on Facebook, a live stays on Facebook. Yeah. So they can still go and plug into it whenever they want. Yeah, so but it's not, it's not the same. It. It's not the same. No. These things are spectacles. When it's alive, you can get involved. Mm. So you got to say it and a person responds back to you. Mm. You can get a reaction, you mm. know? Like, you know, look at, they got the stuff on a, on a TikTok right now of the NPC content. Yeah. People are, people are perfect. You know what NPC content is? No. I'm glad you don't. I'm very glad you don't. <laughs> but NPC stands for non-playable character. So there are people on um, TikTok being a non-playable character from a video game and people are literally just commenting just so they can get a reaction from that person as a non-playable character from a video game. And people are making money, like thousands. No, stop it. What are you I talking know. about? No, when you get off this, when you get off this podcast and about? you actually have a look at it and see it for yourself, you're going to be amazed, man. You're going to be thinking, where are we going in this world? <laughs> yeah. So that is the appeal of live, someone being able to react and respond to you and acknowledge you. Mm. Um, I do want people to get acknowledgement, but I just understand that people, their time is difficult and I would rather, the app works around people's time and their time works around the app. Fair enough. I mean, I, I guess it's always got to be something that's that's a little bit more unique and, you know, there's there's a marketing angle there as well. Of course. There's I'm, a not, I'm not ruling it out for, I'm not ruling, I didn't, I, I never ruled it out. 100%. But I said, at this, this app in this stage, this the principle, principle is that well, we're not allowed. It's good to have principles, right? Because it's like, this is, you know, we, we, we want there to be this kind of values around this app. And that mm. makes sense because listen, right now, if you look at Facebook, they're just throwing everything at everything. One minute the algorithm's changing, next minute they're doing this, next minute you can do reels, next minute, like they're just literally trying to find another Swiss ball. Mm. Like what does Facebook really actually stand for? Like what, what, like, what yeah. is the Facebook app now? I'll tell you what, yeah. Um, Facebook may not necessarily be big here in the UK, but around the world, um, there are some people that are at Facebook stage in evolution and social media evolution mm. they're at facebook stage it's mm. kind of interesting to say it that way isn't it no, I know. but yeah, there are yeah, places in the world that are at facebook stage that's powerful yeah um then also meta they own facebook they own instagram they own whatsapp they own all these different things and one of the things about like they're scared about so whatsapp is meant to be end-to-end -end encrypted that's the num that's that's its selling point mm -hmm. that's one of the main things that when whatsapp sold to facebook they said we want to maintain to make sure that it's end-to-end -end encrypted if you knew that whatsapp wasn't end-to-end -end encrypted and anybody has access to your information and this, this conversation that you have on whatsapp the appeal of the app will just go down massively yeah but what they're doing now what I've noticed, what you know, what's been said is that WhatsApp are interested in now getting in the the video call space. Mm -hmm. So, like instead of Zoom, you'll do a WhatsApp business call because mm -hmm. you know there's WhatsApp business. Mm -hmm. The WhatsApp business will incorporate like a Zoom call and a WhatsApp web or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you like that the app, and you're doing Zoom calls. I think that's quite smart, personally. Me, I think that they can really take over that space if they do that that is quite smart yeah that's very smart very 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 smart yeah. um this is the first i'm hearing of it so this is literally just my initial reaction to it but it's very smart people are already making video calls on whatsapp yeah people are already making calls now i've got someone's telephone number but i have to go and jump on zoom yeah to have a meeting with them yeah whereas now <laughs> i can just drop you a whatsapp yeah say yo we're jumping on yeah. i was gonna say jumping on zoom in this time but we're jumping <laughs> on. <laughs> no, but zoom have got it the same way that hoover have a vacuum cleaner mm -hmm. some people call it vacuum cleaner hoover. zoom in it yeah, 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 yeah. zoom like, oh, jumping on zoom. but I here's the thing, though, Google but call, here's the but thing. I, I say zoom but here's the thing it just goes to show not how fickle we are as humans but how quickly if you mess around, you can get forgotten about. Yep. Look at Blockbusters. Like, look at Skype. 
it used to be called yeah. Skyping. It wasn't Zoom before. Yeah. Zoom was only in the last yeah. three years, bro. Yeah. Zoom only really became a thing yeah. during COVID. Yeah. But think about how it's just become the normal lexicon now. Because if you don't move with the times, which Skype didn't do, mm. there's someone else who's hungry, who's at your heels, and they're going to come and take your food. You know what, yeah? I'm going to make an argument for Skype, you know. Skype, I think Skype is... Dead. No, it's a good, I don't think it's a bad product, <laughs> you know. Okay. I honestly don't it's think it's a bad, bad product. But I'm saying they're but dead. They're the thing dead. is, I just don't think that they... I think one of the main things that Skype did wrong, in my opinion, was selling to Microsoft. Because now Teams is the priority for Microsoft. It's mm. not Skype. So it's probably that Teams have used Skype um, technology the IP, the tech, yeah. Yeah, to do that. But... Skype's still a better product than Teams, in my opinion. Mm. It's still, when I say better products, I mean like just doing a, a regular video call. Mm -hmm. Teams is just very buggy. Yeah, Teams is very buggy. Very buggy. Yeah, 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 Skype, yeah. It's, they've been good from early, you know. If no one's using you, it doesn't matter. They're dead. They're Skype, listen, Skype is dead. Like, that, that's just the reality. But they, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't, you know, pick it's, up with the times. It's a shame. It is a shame because that's Skype shame. was, it was Skype. It was called, that's you know, jump on the Skype. So, um, but yeah, bro, listen, this has been... Um, jump this on the Skype. Do you remember people used to say that's that? That's what I'm saying. Jump on it like it's... <laughs> wow. But we just said Zoom and we literally said it as if it's been like that forever. And I just realized like, oh, no, it hasn't actually. But just goes to show if Zoom isn't ready, because right now Zoom's, Zoom was just... His market shares dropped by more than 50%. It's just gone bang. Zoom is collapsing, right? Because obviously it's different. People yeah. are no longer in COVID anymore and they haven't yeah. tried quite found a way to iterate the product yet. Yeah? And if they're not careful, listen, what we know is Zuckerberg has got a few billions behind him. Yeah. Right? So if he attacks this space with a different angle, with numbers that people already have, and now I can just do this Zoom quality calls on the WhatsApp, on my phone, on my iPad, they might just come for the lunch, right? So they've got to be very, very careful with that. Yeah, <laughs> agree. Very careful. Agreed. But bro, man, this has been really, really insightful. Um, I've really enjoyed the conversation. This has been, this has actually been, when you listen to my other podcast, you know, this has been very, very different. <laughs> very, very different. But I've really enjoyed it though. Uh, yeah. But like I said to you at the start, yeah. you know, we've got two set questions. One is at the start and one is at the end, right? Mm -hmm. You've, you've mentioned a lot about kind of what you're doing now, you know, for work, the PR side of things, and then obviously your own actual business, which is this tape, um, social media, social networking platform. What, what, what is today like your need to succeed? Um, it stands the same. Um, just trying to look after the people around me. Simple as that. Just trying to look after the people around me. I, I want to make the world a better place than what I came into it with. Mm. I mean, I don't think I'm going to bring world peace, but I would like to make it at least, at least a little bit better, you know, a little mm. bit better. I like to provide something that, you know, can make the world easier for people going forward. I want to make an easier world for my kids so that my kids are able to, you know, grow up in a better world than the world that I grew up in. James Mercer, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ibrahim. It's good catching up. Pleasure, bro. You are listening to the Need to Succeed podcast with Ibrahim Brahma. Make sure to like and subscribe for more episodes like this.